Hi there, I hope you're well. The Roland TR8S got a fabulous update earlier this year with the addition of FM drum models. I thought I'd spend a little bit of time describing how each of the different dials works, if you're unfamiliar with those, and a brief explanation of what FM synthesis actually is to try and demystify some of these new controls. I've got the FM kick model up on screen at the minute, and the first thing that I've done is to make sure that the FM ratio control is at 1.0. Now what that does is it ensures that the, the two different waveforms that are being used in uh, an FM setting are playing the same pitch. Now frequency modulation, FM, it happens when one waveform is used to modulate another, that's to change another waveform. You have a carrier wave, which is what you can hear, and then you have a modulator wave, which is the one that is used to affect the, the waveform of the carrier. Uh, some synthesizers that use FM refer to these as operators, and you can have operators that do either um, modulation or are carriers. That's just a catch-all term. I think... I haven't got any evidence to prove this, but I think on the FM synthesis modules here, we've got two operators, a carrier and a modulator. There might be a third one, but I'm not certain. If we have a look at the kick model, as I say, with the ratio at 1 to 1.0, and we play a sound, we've got pretty much a pure sine wave, and that's the carrier waveform that we can hear. If I increase the FM depth, what we're doing is we're changing that sound with a, a modulator. And you can hear, as we increase that FM depth, the, the sound changes over time. That's because there is a, a, an envelope that is controlling the modulator very slightly. And that's what this control here is to uh, use to do. That's to control the decay amount of the modulator waveform. So the modulator is, is coming in at full power and then reducing. So if we reduce this decay amount, uh, the time that it takes for that modulator to, to dissipate uh, shortens. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. This is, this is like a two operator synth in this setting, I think. So let's extend that decay up a little bit. Now we've got two controls here that uh, describe feedback. The first one of these is feedback of the modulator into itself. And that basically means the more you increase that, the busier and the noisier the waveform of the modulator is. And similarly with this one here, the feedback is for the carrier. So let's have a listen to the carrier change. That quickly becomes quite aggressive as a sound. We change the feedback amount of the operator. Again, sounds pretty brutal in the end, but it's a very different sound. So that's why you've got two feedback controls. It's, it's the two operators are being fed back into themselves separately. And then finally on this row here, we've got a color control. And I think if I just reduce all the FM itself, I think that is simply uh, a saturator. Which is quite a subtle sound, really. So that covers these first two rows. On the third row, we've got, uh, this is pretty much subtractive, subtractive synthesis popping its head up. You've got a high pass filter, a low pass filter, and the resonant control for the low pass filter. So as you'd imagine, the high pass filter, that cuts off the bottom end of the signal. And similarly, the low pass filter cuts off the top end. And the resonance will create a peak at the cutoff signal, so it will amplify the frequencies at the cutoff point. 
So if you combine these, you've got quite a lot of control and the potential to create some really gnarly, gr uh, aggressive sounds. On the final row here, we've got a pitch envelope control. And that is very, very useful for a kick drum because that's what gives you that, that thump right at the beginning, the, the transient sound. If that's a short decay, you get a very clicky transient. If it takes more time, you end up with something that's got more oomph than, than click. There's like a click. And the last two controls, I think the body control, this is what leads me to suspect that there's actually a third operator. Uh, I think this is an additional one without any feedback that's just added into the mix to give another set of frequencies or another frequency to go alongside the main kick. I'm not sure how the click sound is generated, but a video from uh, New Tricks, the synth guy, he suggested that that could be a phase difference. So if two waveforms start at different times, you could say they are out of phase. And when you get a waveform that uh, is audible when it's not at a zero point to start with, that tends to give you a clicking sound because the, the representation from the speaker is going from zero to full almost instantaneously. So I think that is um, a phase difference control. So that pretty much covers the, the controls of the, the kick model. If we go over to the percussion model, you can see we've got a lot of the same kind of controls. There is an additional pair here which are harmonic level and harmonic ratio. So if we just simplify again everything that we've got here. And then if I add the harmonic level control and slowly increase the ratio. So we've got like an additional operator again, I think, in the background, giving you a second uh, tone to go alongside the main one. Finally, on the bottom row, we've got two additional controls compared to the kick. You've got a pitch attack as well as a note control. Now, assuming that your tuning control is on zero, the note actually gives you the, the core or the root uh, note that the percussion is playing. And the pitch attack, again, is part of this envelope control here. And if we increase the envelope amount and then increase the attack amount, you'll hear that it takes time for that pitch envelope to start making its difference. So we've got a full understanding, hopefully now, of the kick and the percussion model. The FM snare drum model, again, has very similar controls. The only addition here is a noise function, and that helps to emulate the, the snares at the bottom of a snare drum. That's the metal um, cables that rattle against the drum skin. So if we look at the cymbal model, again, we've got all the same controls. The thing that makes each of these models different behind the scenes will be the preset pitches of the operators and poss possibly also the amount of feedback uh, that is permitted by the feedback control and the, the sort of ratio options that you've got to choose from in some cases as well, I think. The hand clap model has got a completely different bottom row. If we listen to the, the raw sound, you can hear right at the beginning there are multiple um, there are multiple transients that you can hear, and if we adjust the claps functions, the interval and the, the claps itself, you can hear those as they get spread out slightly.
So there's some clever manipulation of the of the frequencies behind these dials here. And the nuance control, I think, is a like a resonance amount. So FM synthesis can get a little bit complicated um, behind the scenes, but I think Roland have done a really good job of simplifying how it's implemented on the TR8S. If you enjoyed this or found it interesting, please leave a like, it's really appreciated. Take care and I'll see you on the next one.